Alpine's 2023 F1 season was a roller coaster of agony. Despite a few podium moments, their ride was bumpy AF. But guess what? They're not sitting still. Join us as we spill the tea on the epic fails, mid-season madness, and the jaw-dropping changes they're making to conquer 2024. All right, as we're speaking, Alpine's 2023 F1 season was pure agony, with Pierre Gasly and Esteban Ocon playing daredevils on the track, grabbing a podium each. But let's not sugarcoat it. The A523 car was a moody teenager throwing tantrums left and right. It's like they needed divine intervention just to snag a few measly points. So what's the tea, you ask? Alpine didn't just sit around, they hit the reset button mid-season and decided it was time to rewrite the F1 rulebook. Picture this, fixing a failing engine is like giving your grandma's vintage car a high-tech upgrade. Despite their efforts, 2023 wasn't their year. Now let's zoom out and look at the whole season. Their overall points took a nosedive from 173 to 120, ouch, right? It's not exactly what you'd write home about, especially when you've got a 100 race plan for world domination. Grassley and Aeon, our track heroes, didn't exactly sweep the team owners off their feet, but wait, there's more drama. It's not just the racetrack where Alpine hit speed bumps. CEO Lauren Rossi got the side eye and shuffle in his seat, and just when you thought that was enough chaos, BAM! Team principal Otmar Zafnauer and the season sporting director Alan Perman got the boot at the same time. Synchronized exits, anyone? Oh, and to add a sprinkle of spice to the stew, Chief Technical Officer Pat Fry decided to hitch a ride to Williams. Chaos much? Now, let's fast forward a bit. Alpine realized they needed a serious facelift, and by serious, I mean reshuffling the top dogs. It's like they threw a surprise party and the guest list included a new CEO, a new team principal, and a new sporting director. New year, new them, right? But hold on, we're not done. They even had a chief technical officer change, showing they weren't messing around when it came to shaking things up. But hey, let's cut Alpine some slack. It's not like they weren't trying. They threw everything at the wall, hoping something would stick. Mid-season, they were like, hold my energy drink, and decided to work on that failing engine. Unfortunately, it was a classic case of too little, too late. The car was as unpredictable as your ex's texting habits. Sometimes it worked, and most times it left you scratching your head. Now, here's the million dollar question. Can Alpine recover from this chaotic mess? They're not giving up, rumor has it they're working on some jaw-dropping changes for 2024. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, and we're here for it. Now picture this, Bruno Famine, the power unit boss, got the crown of interim team principal. Was it a surprise? Oh you betcha. Nobody saw that coming, but hey, maybe he's got the magic touch and his skills are better suited for steering the ship than designing power units. Fast forward to late July, the team's been reshuffled, and it looks like the madness in Belgium was just ripping off a band-aid. After a slew of terrible performances in the first half of the season, Renault CEO Luca De Mio made a grand entrance at Enstone and declared his undying love for the Alpine project. Cue the much-needed upgrades of the factory where the Renault power units are born. But wait, there's more. Results weren't exactly doing the cha-cha over the course of the season, but towards the end, it seemed like things were settling down instead of spiraling into an abyss. Enter Bruno Famine, the guy wearing the interim team principal hat for the long haul. He's like, sure, we're not where we wanted to be, but hey, mid-season changes unlock some serious potential. People are tossing around ideas like confetti, especially on the track. We've got Rob Cherry as team manager and Jason Milligan as the chief mechanic. And these guys? Oh, they're cooking up some serious improvements and making sure their squad is on the suggestion bandwagon. Talk about a turnaround, huh? Famine, our man at the helm, is over the moon, saying the potential was a bit capped until the end of July, and I'm very happy with that. The garage, the track, the engineering, the strategy, everybody was on fire, daring to do things they wouldn't have dreamt of before. Bruno spills the beans, hinting that under the previous management of Otmar Zavnauer, the team was playing it safe, maybe a tad too conservative. It's like they were held back by the old boss from unleashing the full potential needed to make a competitive F1 team. You know, in F1, you've got to be willing to try anything to find that on-track magic, and perhaps, just perhaps, the previous management wasn't up to the challenge. But let's rewind a bit. One thing that kept popping up as an excuse for Alpine was the ongoing saga of power unit problems. In July, word got out that the topic of engine equalization was on the F1 Commission's table. The FIA did some Sherlock-level analysis and found that Alpine's Renault engine was 15 to 25 kW. That's 20 to 33 horsepower. 
down compared to their rivals at Ferrari, Mercedes, and Honda. The FIA straight up called it a notable performance gap. But hold your horsepower because as the season rolled on, other teams were like, nah, those reports are exaggerated. Talk about a plot twist, huh? After all, when it comes to F1, the drama is just as important as the horsepower on the track. Now, Alpine, realizing they're not exactly everyone's favorite on the F1 playground, decided to pivot their strategy. Since it became crystal clear that their rivals weren't sending any love their way, a brain trust at Alpine thought, why waste our precious resources trying to fix our current engine when we can channel that energy into creating a beast for the new engine rules? And just like that, the game plan for 2024's car development got a spicy makeover. Now let's chat with Bruno Famine, the man with the master plan. He's waving off any murmurs about the engine being the weak link. I don't hear it anymore, he boldly declares. According to Bruno, you can't just blame one thing in F1. It's not just the aero, the engine, or the tires. It's a cutthroat competition where you need to be in top notch in every department. Everybody knows that and everyone is focused on that, he says, making it clear that the folks not on board with the mission are free to find the exit. Hold on to your steering wheels because even though they can't physically upgrade the engine, they've got a secret weapon. Software changes. Yes, you heard that right. It's like fine tuning a symphony it might not get more horsepower, but the driving characteristics are about to get a serious upgrade. And here's the kicker. It's all about finding the right balance between engine performance and aerodynamics. The more power they pumped into the engine, the worse it got for aerodynamics. It's like trying to juggle bowling balls and flaming torches at the same time. But wait, Bruno spills the beans and it's not the engine itself, but the energy recovery or electrical systems that are throwing a wrench into the works. They're recuperating less energy than the competition, which means less electrical power. Now let's shift gears a bit. Engine performance wasn't Alpine's only hiccup. They only rolled out three major car upgrades during the season, and as the season unfolded, they found themselves getting overtaken in the aerodynamics game. Matt Harmon, the technical director, spills the beans. The chassis had too much volume and had to really capitalize on the floor upgrade. They needed a brand spanking new chassis. Well, the good news, my friends, is that the new chassis is on the way for 2024, along with a shiny new transmission and suspension. Talk about a makeover. Just like the cool kids on the F1 block, Alpine has realized that to ride the ground effect wave, they can't just tweak their existing ride. No, sir. They need to rip it up and start from scratch, implementing everything they've learned along the way. And with teams like Ferrari and McLaren finishing the season on a high note, it's clear Alpine has some serious catching up to do. So here is the million dollar question. Can Alpine turn the tide with their new management dream team over the winter, or are they destined for the desolate no man's land in 2024? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and until our next pit stop, drive safe and catch you on the flip side.